Hi, this is SJ Patterson back with a tutorial this time about one of my favorite musicians of all time, Fela Kuti. If you don't know anything about Fela Kuti, you are probably not watching this tutorial, so I'm going to assume you do know something about him. He invented a style of music called Afrobeat, which is unsurpassed. It's just some of the most amazing music ever written. One of the things that attracts me to it the most is that it is rhythmically more complex than any other music I have heard. In this case, there are many different parts playing completely opposite rhythms that have nothing to do with each other. It's called polyrhythm, and in Western music, usually you might have two or three, maybe even four different rhythms happening at the same time unless you're Frank Zappa you might have a few more but in Fela's music you can have much more than that and I'm going to break down a song or a piece uh, one of my favorite ones called Colonial Mentality uh, and I have transcribed lots of Fela's music and I'm going to share some of that with you right now in the intro you heard the original track a little bit of the beginning here is a chart that I've written uh, that uh, uses uh, tenor sax, baritone sax, trumpet, maracas, guitar one, guitar two, bass, and drums. If I play all this, it's going to sound quite similar to what you just heard. So let's do that first of all. I'm going to switch into a panorama view and I'm going to press play. So that's a little bit of a taste. Uh, it actually skipped on skipped one of my first and second endings there, but no matter. Let's break this down a little bit. The first thing we hear is the bass, which goes like this. And the piece is probably about 15 minutes long. The bass does nothing but that. And if you're a bass player and think that's going to be boring, then you do not have the right attitude in life because there's nothing like playing bass to fella tunes. Uh, and you have to be really good to lock in with all the different conflicting rhythms. Uh, I'm going to go over this in a tablature uh, in a second. Actually, let me do it right now. If I can find this particular uh, chart. Here we go. This actually, I'll stay on this chart for a little bit because here I have the two guitar parts and the two bass part and the drum part. Let me go with the drum part first. I'm not a great drummer. So this is a very sim simplified uh, drum pattern uh, compared to what he plays. But as you can see, it's, it's very unorthodox compared to rock music. We have three kick drums and a snare followed by two more snares. And it sounds like this. Not your regular day rhythm. One of the amazing things with Fela's interplay between drums and bass is that the bass often plays on different beats than the kick drum, which is also something quite unusual. If you see the bass line, the bass line plays its note towards the end of the bar and it plays one note on the downbeat while the kick drum continues with two more. The bass part by itself, as you can see in tablature, you just require, well, if we look here, two A's. No, sorry, two C's, two A flats, and an F. 
uh, in tablatures written like this. I'm, I can zoom in if you want to be see it a little closer. Here we go. Here's the bass part. Just like that. Now, if you put that and the drums together, you will hear something really interesting. Let me do this and this. Actually, I was going to do this. I don't need to hear the tab twice or the bass twice. Here we go. And notice how the kick drum is more audible on these two beats just because the bass only played the first note. Uh, and I love the way the kick drum just stands out by itself. And that happens in a lot of his songs. Let's go over the guitar parts. This guitar uh, fellow is called tenor guitar, which is kind of almost always playing a low single note picking pattern. Uh, his instrumentation is quite similar. The songs are very different and unique in every possible way. Melodic variations uh, cannot be overstated. But usually he has two guitar parts. And one of them usually goes a uh, low picking note. And this is the part. You can see tablature. I'm going to move it over a little bit, maybe this way. And if you compare that, for instance, to the bass part, it happens at completely different times. Doesn't seem like it would work, but it does work. Uh, when we play the next guitar part, which is often a strumming part of a chord, this one's a little unorthodox because usually it uses minor seven chords or minor six chords, stuff like that. But uh, in this case, it's kind of a uh, thirds, you know, a little rhythmic part. It goes like this. And as yes, you can see the tab here if you want to learn it. The panning in his music is often such that these two guitar parts are on two opposite sides of the speakers. Together they sound, oops, I shouldn't have done that. I was going to do simply this and this. Together they sound like this. Now if we add in the bass to that mix. We got this. Four cut three completely different rhythms. Then if we add in the drums, we got another. I keep doing that. We got another rhythm. And I'm gonna shrink it a little bit so we can see all the ones that are being played right here. Here we got all four parts together. And that's pretty much the essence of the rhythm section. In addition, there's usually maracas and some congas, different drums, percussion, and uh, as we're gonna see next, the horn parts will have absolutely nothing to do with this. So the horn parts and the rhythm parts are completely distinct. And sometimes when you do play one of these parts on bass or guitar, uh, and the horns come in, you almost lose your part completely because you cannot understand how they can possibly fit together and if you start listening to the horns unless you've done this a lot of times uh, you will lose your place i'm going to switch back to the other uh, big chart look at some other horn parts